G'day folks, Connor here, back with another video. Now today I'm looking at five ways to improve stabilization on your budget camera. For me, it was so disappointing to spend $1,000 on the Canon R50, put it in 4K, and the stabilization was terrible. And I just didn't understand how could it be so good on a phone, yet so bad on an APS-C camera that cost $1,000. And so I had to go exploring and finding ways to get better stabilization. And this is the video where I'm going to show you how to go from this type of footage to this type of footage, all with some simple techniques that will help you lift your game. Now, why do we have shaky footage? Number one is you're probably walking while you're using your camera or moving around. Another reason you could have shaky footage is lack of certain features within your camera, like IBIS or lens stabilization or a combination of the two. Or if you have long focal lengths, then you're gonna also struggle to keep your footage stable. And by the way, it is much easier to stabilize footage on a smartphone because this sensor is about the size of a pea. Now, as you get bigger sensors, it does become harder to stabilize. That's also why you see really good stabilization in action cameras. And also, a lot of people don't know this when they first start out, and that is turn stabilization completely off when you're fixed on a tripod. You don't need it, and sometimes they can sort of conflict with each other and cause the footage to not look as good. The image will look better, I promise you that, with stabilization off when you're on a tripod. The hardest thing about that is remembering to turn it back on. Now, one of the things you can do immediately is to use a wider lens. It's just harder to see the movement within the footage when you're on a wider lens, and it's easier to also crop in a little bit and fix some of that stabilization in post. So wider lens is better for stabilization. Now, there are different types of stabilization as well within your grasp, and the most basic form of stabilization is on the tripod. Then within cameras, we actually have different types of stabilization and different manufacturers call them different things. Now I just had to jump in here and re-record this because I kept saying IBIS. What the hell is wrong with me? The Canon R50 and lots of cameras around this price point doesn't really have IBIS. What I'm talking about is digital image stabilization, which causes so many problems when it comes to the quality of your image. And as you can see from this footage, with lens stab on only, it looks so bad. Then you turn lens stab off and it just gets even worse. And then if you add in digital image stabilization, it becomes more stable, but the image just looks artifacty and choppy and just terrible. It's not something I would want to use. I would much rather just put the camera on a tripod and film with IBIS turned off, everything turned off, and just be stationary because it's that bad. And on the Canon R50, you have digital image stabilization off, on, and then enhanced. And the more you turn it on, the worse it gets. It just starts to look so bad. And then you also get that jello-y, artifact-y sort of look in the corners, especially if you're on a really wide angle lens. And the crop factor, really inhibits the image as well. I mean, it just punches in, punches in, and then that's how it stabilizes the image by cropping in and then using that to stabilize it. So it just destroys the image. So forgive me, a few times through this video, I think I said IBS instead of digital stabilization. I really meant to say digital stay, but I had IBIS on the brain. Now this here is filmed on the Canon R6 Mark II, and it does have IBIS built in, but you know, you're going from a $1,000 camera to a $4,000 camera. So for some of us, it's just not even a question. We, we don't go upgrading. We can't. So we have to make the best we can with the Canon R50 or cameras within a similar price range. I love my Canon R50 so much. I'm just so disappointed that the stave is just so bad for video. Now, in some cameras as well, we do have in lens stabilization. So you can just flick a switch and it turns the stabilization on within your lens. And that is another level of stabilization. So here we are filming on the Canon R50 with only lens stabilization turned on. And you can see how shaky it really is. That's why I think it's really important 
if you are using the Canon R50 that you do use a stabilizer for anything more than a Facebook post because it's really quite atrocious. The image is nice, but the stabilization, Canon R50's biggest downfall. If you can upgrade your lenses to lenses that do have lens stabilization built in, it is going to pay off, but that is an expensive option. Now then we do have handheld stabilizers, which do come off quite well. For me, I'm a pretty shitty camera operator, so they don't always go best with me and my skill level, but I have seen some skilled camera operators that can get really good footage with the handheld stabilizers, and I would recommend getting one if you fit that category. But where we are gonna see massive improvements for stabilization is within purchasing a gimbal. Now I know some of you are gonna be like, oh, we already know that, but I just want you to take a minute to look at all these types of stabilization within your camera. You turn them on, you get crop, you get artifacts, you get jello, you get all sorts of stuff going on, but you can still keep your 4K uncropped, really nice looking image that your Canon R50 produces when you have a gimbal. Okay, so here we are on the Canon R50 with lens stab on and the in-body stabilization turned on as well in enhanced mode. And you can see it's cropped in, it's introduced lots of artifacts. The image actually looks quite terrible so you wouldn't really want to use it. But the 4K without stabilization turned on looks really good. That's why I think it's important for anything more than a Facebook post, use a gimbal or some sort of stabilizer or just stop walking and put it on a tripod. Okay, so this is the Canon R50, 4K, 25 frames per second, completely stabilized. But lens stab is turned off and enhanced stabilization is turned off as well. Yet somehow we get this amazingly stable footage. I absolutely love it and it's still in 4K. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, you can also use your high speed frame rate when it comes to Canon and also you can film in 50 or 60 frames per second. That is gonna drop you down to 1080p and then when it comes to B-roll of product shots or outdoor B-roll, you can also slow your footage down 1080p, 50 frames per second, you can do the lot. So although the Canon R50 does have its limitations, you can overcome those by using a gimbal or stop walking and use a tripod or using the enhanced stabilization in the camera. But you can see from this video which one is better. For me, it's 4K 25 frames on a gimbal. What do you think? So now we're actually going to see the Canon R50 4K 25 frames per second on a gimbal running after me as I'm running and we can see how stable that is compared to no gimbal. Let's go. Stable, stable. <laughs> you can just see the difference is magical. So. That is a big tip from me. Now, these gimbals can have a huge impact as well when you are using third party lenses. Now, here is like a cinema type lens. It's a bit of a cheap one from Samyang, but it is heavy, it has zero stabilization, but it has a nice looking image in it. Now, I can balance this on a gimbal and get some really nice footage out of it as well. Looks like it is staved in body. I've also put on the Helios M44, adapted to the Canon R50. Great little adapter here, links down below if you want to pick one up. But this gives me access to any Canon EF lens that was ever made, I can now use on my Canon R50. Combine that with my gimbal and I can get all sorts of awesome looking images. It really does open your world up and you're not just restricted to the very expensive RF camera lenses. That's probably my most used accessory for the Canon R50 is that RF to EF adapter. Now also, good proper handling technique can also just be the way you hold the camera. So you're holding it like this, arms tucked into your body, so that you are actually like a tripod. So shooting like this with stabe off is gonna be much worse than shooting like this with stabe on, and you are gonna get more stable footage at no extra cost. Your technique plays a huge part in the quality of your video. Oh, I'll just fix it in post. Well, you probably won't.
It'll probably look shit because you tried to fix it in post. But if you get it right in camera, it's gonna look much better every time. So that is my tips for getting stable footage on your budget-friendly camera, the one that doesn't come with all the amazing built-in stabe, just the you know cheap end of the market, that's where we're at. We can still get really nice footage. Comments down below if you have any questions about the gear that I use or my techniques. And even if you wanna just tell me that I'm shit and how I can improve, I'm happy for you to put those comments down below as well. And if you got to this part of the video, just comment yeehaw, so I know you did, and I will be very grateful for your time. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.